somebody got convicted, but it's not justice. Not yet. Y'all, it is all I can do to not Google everything about this case. Do you hear me? You know what it is. My name is Ashley, and this is My Sweet Perspective, where I give my take on all things TV and movie related. And we are back to talk about Under the Bridge, season one, okay, episode seven, three, and seven. And y'all. And I, like I said, I'm doing everything I can not to get on the internet and see exactly what happened in this case because I'm flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted. I'm disgusted. And I don't know what to do. But without further ado, let's get into the review. So y'all know that at the end of episode six, everybody got locked up. Okay. Everybody. As they needed to. Right. Everybody needed to get locked up, you know, and, and they did. And so we find out immediately through a news report that's playing at the very beginning of the episode. And it says that four were sentenced to one year for assault. And I'm assuming that's Josephine Dusty and the two other women that Kelly had enlisted in the whole jumping arena. And by the way, if you guys don't know already, heavy trigger warnings, um, really heavy themes, you know, just... It's a heavy show, okay? Uh, and so we see them, honey, locked up in the detention center. But, I mean, Josephine still acts like she's having a ball, <laughs> okay? I mean, it, you know, it seems like it's light work, all right? Um, we also see uh, Suman's interview with the uh, news, and basically she just wants justice. You know what I mean? Uh, we also find out during this segment that Rebecca has a book deal, And she's finding it harder to write about Rena than it is to write about Warren. So she's going to focus in on Warren. And I, I keep saying it, and it keeps proving my point episode after episode. And I know this woman is no longer here with us. But, honey, Rebecca, just... Okay, Kelly's lawyer is on his job. Do we know at this point she has not even stood trial? And they're actually trying to get her out of the detention center because she feels as though her life is being threatened in there. And the lawyer fed that. It's, it's, it doesn't surprise me what money can do, but I'm just literally so disgusted, so disgusted about it. Um, and so finally, we flash back to the day of Rena's unaliving that morning. And now we are seeing it from Warren's perspective, right? So he's talking to his dad on the phone because we know his dad had met a woman and moved off and left Warren there in the trailer. Well, you know, he stopped paying the rent, apparently, on the trailer. And so there's an eviction notice and Warren has to get out. But... Without any family, where is Warren supposed to go? And the dad says, well, do you want do you want to come down here? Because I'm going to stay down here for good. I'm never coming back. And Warren's like, all right, well, you know, I I, I want to stay. You know, my girlfriend Samara's down here. I, I want to I, I want to stay. And my thing is, he's a child. He doesn't have a choice. You're the father. I don't know how you can just abdicate your responsibility and role as a parent. That's something I I'll never understand. Um and so, again, the same day that he was evicted was the same day that Rena was unalived. Uh, Rebecca, of course, is siding with Warren. She even visited him in jail, I'm assuming putting commissary on his books, doing everything that she can to be there for him. Because in some weird, bizarre way, she is trying to gain absolution from what happened with her brother. And she and Cam even have a conversation later in the episode where Cam is like, you know, when I said what I said to you about Gabe's unaliving being your fault, I was a kid. I didn't mean it. Warren is not... Gabe okay and and Rebecca's like I know I know I understand but she really has this heart for him and it's so nuanced and being that this show is based on her writings like in real life I'm wondering if that's why we're getting the spin that we're getting on Warren because in this episode um, you are moved to compassion and empathy for him right um, I think we all know that he need there has to be a, a price that he pays but we also know that Kelly was the mastermind. You know what I mean? And so, I don't know, I kind of find myself like vacillating between, you know, two opinions. Like, okay, um, he's going through this trial and, you know, he actually tells the truth. Um, but is, is, the, is the sentence just? 
based on what we know. You know what I mean? But, you know, we'll go on. So basically, Josephine is sitting up there, you know, living her best life in the detention center and is mad because her name's not on the news. Ciao. Just a mess. Okay. Um, uh, the police and the prosecuting attorney um, are really trying to figure out the case, how they're going to go about prosecuting this. Um, they need Samara's testimony because, remember, she said they pulled her into the water, it, implicating Warren, and they feel like they need that, right? Because if Warren gets on the stand and doesn't say anything— their case is out of the window, right? Um, and so the the sheriff, Cam's dad, is like, well, hey, get Dusty. You know, she's just uh, whatever. You know what I mean? And it's uh, the, ra the racism, the... Uh, it's just it's so sickening right that we see this limited uh, these this limited group of people of color there um and it's just that's was just their plight and it's so unfortunate i mean from rena's parents even trying to report the crime initially to now you know dusty being just one of those girls and it's like cam's like don't call her that you know what i mean it's just sick and so basically the dad is like cam you need to get dusty to get on that stand and um you know testify to her statement that she wrote that warren did it and cam was like no i'm not but she ends up going to talk to dusty and dusty's like i just want to do what's right and cam is moved to compassion because she knows it was wrong and so she tells her dad listen i'll get up on the stand and say i coerced her I made her do it and I don't care about nothing else. And so great. Thankfully we don't have to get dusty on the stand, but later on she and Warren have a conversation because it was very interesting that their detention center is mixed company males and females. Right. Uh, and so Dusty's like, you know, I don't at this point, I don't even really care about what happens to me. She trusted me. I was her friend. We also find out that Warren is having nightmares about what happened. Right. Um, and so she's like, I just want to tell the truth. We owe her that at least. And so um, then we see Kelly, honey. And Kelly's talking to her lawyer, talking about she's just a little girl. Like I just. And again, they were just having too much fun in jail for my liking. I, I didn't like anything about it. Um, and again, Rebecca, her focus for this book is really Warren. And she even tells her dad, you know, um, I could write about a girl I barely know or I could write about Warren. And it's just so silk, sick and self-serving to me, right? She's got this book deal. And so she just... <sighs> Rebecca is just not a likable person but moving right along she decides to meet with Rena's parents and they're really just trying to figure out how are you going to write about Rena when you don't even know her and the sad part is it's like as we're looking at this story who really knew Rena who really knew her maybe Dusty but when asked when all of these different people are asked who was Rena who was Rena the teacher says uh, well she was kind of lonely but no one really knew her. It's kind of heartbreaking. That was kind of the most heartbreaking part of all. Um, and so basically Kelly's, you know, going on her mission because we know the lawyer basically told her if she feels like her life is being threatened, they might be able to get her to get home, get home with her parents. And so Kelly gets the girls, the other two girls that participated to fight her, of course, and she gets what she needs. And by the end of this episode, honey, why are we seeing Kelly walk out the jail skipping? And before she leaves, Josephine says, you know, Warren's having nightmares. Do you ever have nightmares about it? <laughs> and she's like, eh, no, I'm out of here. And that's what privilege does, guys. That's what privilege does. It's so sick and disgusting. You know what I mean? Uh, and so finally, Warren's on the stand because it's time for his trial. And he actually decides he's going to tell the truth. Um, I think initially he was like, I don't remember, but he finally came out and he finally told the truth about what happened. And, and I believe him. I believed what he said. Right. Um, he did kick her for no reason. And I'm like, was it just that he was angry? Even one of the other guy gang members or whatever was like, man, what are you doing? You don't know her. What, what are you doing? Um, and it was just like, why? And then why would you walk with Kelly? He says Kelly was like, oh, I want to go check on her and I want her to apologize. But then when you get there, you don't help. You don't intervene. You know what I mean? You just let her unalive Rena. And so, I mean, you are complicit and you are culpable, but I, her skipping off home and you getting sentenced to life without the possibility of parole at 14 or 15. 
he was convicted, but I, guys, it wasn't, it didn't feel like justice yet. And I'm hoping we have what one more episode and I hope that we get justice. I hope that Rena gets justice. <sighs> that's my, that's my hope guys. But that was episode seven, three and seven. And that title came from when he's on the stand. Warren is like, he felt like he was three out of 10 responsible. So 30% responsible. And Kelly was 70%. And that judge looked him in his eyes and said, I don't believe much of what you said, uh, but violence is a behavior and you're going down. No opportunity for parole. As they're walking out of court, though, Rebecca hugs Warren. And, you know, again, I, you're just so torn because you're like Warren's out here all alone in this world. Parents that didn't think enough of them to even raise them. You know what I mean? Um, and so she offers this extension of love and a hug and Rena's parents see and automatically feel betrayed because, you know, they believe that he's the culprit. And I, I'm just wondering, I mean, I, they have to know that he wasn't the mastermind of this. But nevertheless, guys, that was the episode. Super heavy. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 been a wild ride, you guys. And I just hope in episode eight we get justice. But if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, okay? And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.